Now imagine for a second that a spectator selects a random card from the deck. That card is then taken and shuffled somewhere into the center. The spectator then selects an indicator card to find their card. And after all that, the indicator card is used in finding the spectator's selected card. What's going on guys, Car Mechanic here, and today I'm gonna to be sharing with you how I made an easy card trick a lot more difficult. Let's do it. So great to have all you guys here. Hopefully you've seen the performance by now. If not, I'll put the link on the screen and description so you guys can go and check that out. Now, um, this is just like any other indicator card trick that's out there, except I've taken an easy concept and just making it, making it, made it a lot more difficult. You might be wondering why, and let me tell you, it's because sometimes you just, you just want to challenge. You sometimes just want to show off getting super cool moves under people's noses, and sometimes that just feels cool. So this is uh, one of my versions of a classic indicator card trick. So now to break it down, you want to get a low value card on top of the deck. I would recommend somewhere from between a two to a five. And an easy way to do that is just while going through the deck, you can, for example, let's take three, right? You can just call that card to the back and move it directly to the top and boom, you have that card there. And you can just do it in a normal fashion. You know, no one really cares when you're just looking through the deck like this in the beginning. You can also give it a nice little false shuffle, maintaining that top packet and that indicator card right on top, or you can give it a false cut. Uh, if you don't know how to do any of these things, I have a lot of videos, you can go and check those out. I'll put the link in the description maybe and on the screen. So. Now, once you've got that card on top of the deck, you want a spectator to select a card. Now, when the spectator is selecting a card, you want to make sure that the spectator selects the first card in the same way that the indicator card is going to be selected. So the way I um, do this is I have them go through the deck, let them tell me when to stop. Let's say they say stop here. I stop here, I square all these together, and then I take that bottom card. Again, it's still the card that they selected, take that bottom card out square up the rest of the deck and show it to the spectator, allow them to take it, show whoever else they want. Once that is complete, right, we're taking this card, we're taking this card right here, leaving it right on top. Now this is where it get, you know, a little bit, what am I saying? Now this is where it may get a little bit more difficult because here I like to do the overhand shuffle to control two more cards on top of the spectator selected card. And the reason I'm doing that is because my indicator card is a three. So since it's a three, I want three cards on top of this three. And we already have one card and we want two more. So I do an overhand shuffle and I take one, two. And from here, I maintain this top packet by pushing this back and continuing shuffling and really controlling all that on top. So now if you look at the top four cards, you have the indicator card, you have the spectator selected card and you have the two other cards that are just arbitrary. So now you have these all on top. Now there is another way you could do this if you guys are not super comfortable by doing the overhand shuffle, controlling those two cards. You can get a break under the bottom two cards by counting with your pinky. So you count two cards with your pinky. Uh, so you have those two cards there. And now you can start giving the deck a cut like this. Take those two cards that you got here, drop them on top of the spectator selected card and you can grip the card like this. Now you have that thumb break and you could do perform a double undercut. And then once again, you got those four cards. So whatever method you wanna use, you can use that. Personally, I just like using the overhand shuffle because it's a simple shuffling technique that everyone knows about and just nothing seems suspicious about that. Now, once this is done, the spectator is now going to select their indicator card. This is a card that you have to force onto the spectator. And of course, remember it is in the fourth position here. So what I like to do is the underspread, the blah, blah, blah. And what I like to do is the underspread force. So I come here, cull over this card. Boom. We're going to keep going. When they say stop, again, we want to keep it consistent, right? So we had them pick out the card like this, square all this up, take this out, leave it sticking out like this. And now from here, you want to flip over all the cards underneath it, flip over all the cards on top of it. And then you tell the spectator, you're not, of course, you're not gonna tell them that this is an indicator card. You're gonna tell them that this is their card. And then you just flip it over, be like, bam, there's the spectator selected card. There it is, thank you so much. And they're gonna be like, you're, you're completely wrong, you're a moron. But then you're gonna be like, wait, hold on, I'm not a moron. 
just going to spread all these cards out. And now we're actually going to use this three as an indicator card. So we're going to go one, two, three. You're going to count the three cards behind this card or underneath this card, not above it. One, two, three. Take that card out and show it to the spectator. Boom, there is their selected card. And that is how you take a simple card trick and overcomplicate it for no reason. If you guys want to check out more higher level card tricks, you guys can go watch that video right there. And uh, if not, then uh, go out and add some magic into people's day. Peace out.